Hello, victorious ones. How are you doing? I hope everybody is having a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm just coming on here to share something with you guys. This morning as I was praying, um, the Lord just keeps on showing me pearls. So there's different things that are on repeat right now. And that's rebirth, res you know, like resurrection, revival, and restoration. That's on repeat. But another thing that keeps on coming up um, is pearls. And those of you who know, you know I love pearls. And so I want to share something with you guys to encourage somebody. And so I'm just going to wait for people to get on. Or I'll just talk to myself like I always do. Talk to God. That's what I'm used to anyways. Um, yeah, so I just want to cover myself with the blood of Jesus, cover my family with the blood of Jesus. I cover our possessions with the blood of Jesus. I cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus. Father, I ask right now as I stand in the courts of heaven for your angels to be released right now, Father, your warrior and your minister and angels to be released right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I release the anointing of the Holy Spirit to destroy every yoke of bondage. Father, I release your weapons right now into the second heavens, Father, to destroy anything that's not of you. Father, I release the atomic bomb into the second heavens, Father, and I decree and declare, Father, that breakthroughs are happening right now, manifesting in our realm right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for extraordinary blessings coming upon us. So, God, Father, you said that you're doing exceedingly, Father, and abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. Father, may they manifest now, Father. Father, you said in the book of Zechariah 117 that you're giving us overflowing prosperity. And so, Father, I thank you in advance. I speak it, I decree, and I declare overflowing prosperity in all areas of our lives, oh God, so you can get the glory, oh God, the honor, and the praise. Hallelujah, Father. Right now, I stand on Obadiah 117. Father, you said we shall possess our possessions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we stand on 2 Chronicles. 20 and we understand father God that you're fighting our battles for us and so we stand still and we see your deliverance we see your salvation father you said behold and so father God we thank you that our eyes are wide open and we are praying attention because you are doing a new thing and it's springing up father God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ father I thank you that you're making a way out of no way hallelujah what the devil meant for evil father you meant it for our good in in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you that our eyes are wide open. Effort to our eyes, effort to our ears, effort to our spirits, our souls, our bodies, and we're seeing you, Father, high and lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And your, your train, Father, fill the temple. Let your glory, Father, be made manifest upon us on this day as we gather together, Father. You said wherever two, two or three are gathered in your name, touching and agreeing. Father, you said you are there and you will answer us if we ask for anything in the name of your son, Jesus. Yes, you are. And so, Father, we are gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ. And we say, Father, speak for your servant is listening. Father, we decrease right now so that you can increase in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, hallelujah. Let your glory be revealed right now. Father, release the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. We shall not be the same after this. We will not be the same after this in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your presence, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Release your dunamis power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to the most high God. Father, we are ready to eat. Father, you promised to prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Father, we are in the manger right now and we are eating, Father. You're giving us the frankincense, the myrrh, Father, and the gold as we are fellowshipping right here. In the name of Jesus Christ, our manger is transformed into the palace, oh God, and your glory is revealed. Your glory is revealed in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, release your power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Where are the worshipers? Begin to worship him. Hallelujah in spirit and in truth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. In the name of Jesus, release your power. Release your power, Father. Yes, Lord, release the blood, the blood, the blood. Father, let your will be done. I bind every spirit that's not of you. I bind every strong man. I cast them out into the abyss in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory, 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 glory. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Release your power. And let your presence fall. Father God, I thank you. I just opened my eyes. Hallelujah. And I see that we have some, some people on here. So, Father, I thank you. We've come to eat from the master's table. He said, behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. Let him in. I need the door emoji. The, num the, the month of January, January means open doors. It means doors. And so we understand that the doors of heaven the doors, the windows, they're open and we shut and we seal all demonic doors with the blood of Jesus. And we open up the blessed doors <laughs> in the name of Jesus. And we're walking through, walking out. Father God, I thank you for the open doors of blessings for us. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Father, you said when we give. Father, you say you will open up the windows of heaven. Father God, you said that you will prevent the devourers from eating our crops. And so all the givers are gathering right here, Father. We've given ourselves to you. We've given to people, Father God. We're fully surrendered to you. Not our will, but your will be done. Not our will, but thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, we're just vessels for the most high God. And Father, I thank you for exponential blessings being released upon your people on this day. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Mm. If I had 10,000 tongues, I would not be able to praise him. Like, I cannot, it's not enough. It's not enough. Even with 10,000 tongues, God has been so good. God has been so faithful. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Are you thankful? Has the Lord done anything for you? Begin to thank him. He said, be grateful. I was walking. I promise you I was walking on the streets and I'm like, People blowing and cursing at us because I guess we in their way. We are pedestrians walking and they're blowing their horns and carrying on being nasty because we live in a society where people are just nasty. But they better be careful messing with God's people. Touch not my prophets. Don't touch them. Don't touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Do my children no harm. Because I fight their battles for them. Stay out of the way of God's people because their God is fighting for them. Just ask the Egyptians. Just ask Haman. When they realized God was fighting for his people, they backed up. You got to back up. In the name of Jesus, God is fighting our battles for us. Glory to God. And as I was walking, I'm like, stuff is just not working out the way that we expecting them to work out. And a car passed by me and it said, grateful, be grateful, be grateful. Even in your irritation, even in your irritation, begin to praise the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name Together, begin to praise him. That's what King Jehoshaphat did in Second Chronicles. He put the praise and worshipers in the front of the army. And God began to set ambush against their enemies. And the enemy began to, began to kill themselves. Because God's people were worshiping him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. 
Worship him in the name of Jesus. And so let's go over the word of the Lord. And so the word irritate, because we were being irritated right around Christmas. I mean, we've been irritated all year. I guess you could say all of our lives. But around Christmas, it's a good thing we don't celebrate like that. <laughs> we would have been disappointed, honey. I'm like, around Christmas, all the way, we're still going through some things. But God is Yahweh Jireh. He's the God who sees you and he will provide for you. Please share this broadcast. We're going to bless somebody else. And if this bless you, if this message bless you, don't forget to sow into our ministry. If it blesses you. Amen. And so irritate means to make someone annoyed, impatient, or angry. Now, we have a right to be angry. God says be angry, but don't sin. But this type of irritation will have you sinning, <laughs> okay? Okay, it means to be annoyed. It, be, it means to be vexed. The enemy wants to vex you. He wants to um, cause you to be exasperated, okay? He wants you to be displeased. He comes to antagonize you, okay? Get on your nerves. That's what it means to be irritated. And he will use those closest to you. Okay, to infuriate you, to aggravate you, to provoke you. This is what happened with Hannah. Hannah couldn't get pregnant. Hannah means grace, right? She couldn't get pregnant, but her husband loved her and gave her a double portion of blessings. And so Penina kept on irritating Hannah because Penina, the, um, the second wife, she had babies, and so the Bible said they irritate, she would provoke Hannah and Hannah, Hannah would be crying because, you know, she, she experiencing barrenness. Those of you experiencing that barren season and it seemed like nothing is happening for you. You just going through and no matter how much you fast and pray, no matter how much you give into God, it's like you feeling stuck. You feel Aaron and the enemy is coming. It's like you have a, a, a cut and he's pouring the salt in it and he's stabbing you in it and he's trying to get you to give up. He wants you to give up and he wants you to throw in the towel and start cursing God and die. Like Job's wife said, she said, you might as well just go ahead and curse God and drop dead. Huh? Right. The enemy wants you to curse God because remember, Satan wants your worship. He wants your worship. And so that's why you see a lot of people don't want to praise God because they sold out to the devil mm -hmm, right in the church. They don't want to lift up holy hands. They don't want to bow down. They don't want to cry, mess up their little raggedy makeup. They don't want to praise too hard because their wigs will fall up. No, worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega. David said, I have become even more undignified than this. And I will dance out of my clothes and I'll be naked. I don't care. I'm going to praise ye the Lord because that is a command. Let everything that has bread praise the Lord. And so the enemy comes and he tried to rob, rob God of the worship by using you. The sun is glorifying God when it's shining. But here comes us. I'm going through and I'm not praising God. I'm not going to church. I'm not going to read my Bible. You're, you're worshiping the devil. It's time to repent. Receive it or not. You're out of order. Ask me how I know. Been there, done that. Repent. When you're going through your irritation, my God, that's a moment for you to praise God, to let God know I'm not serving the creator for his creation. I'm not just serving you for your things. I'm serving you because I truly love you. And as I was going through this around Christmas, I'm like, God, I serve you. God, I love you. And the devil would tell me, God ain't going to help you. God ain't going to do it. God ain't, look at you, look at you. And he mocking me. And I refuse to give up, refuse to give up. And as I'm talking to you right now, we had two extra cars. The enemy attacked us in the area of our vehicle. We had two, two rentals on this day, just returned a rental because God is a, he said, I'm a way maker. And in the area where the enemy is irritating you and provoking you, that's where God going to bless you the most. 
And as we were driving today, I saw a car and it says, Dad to Samuel. And look how we're talking about Hannah. Hannah eventually gave birth to who? To Samuel. Amen. And as I was driving, I saw Shell. I saw Shell Street. I saw so much stuff. But when I saw Shell, I'm like, I was praying this morning about the pearls. And God said, yeah, open up the shell. Open up the shell and get your pearls. Get your pearls. Get your pearls in the name of Jesus. And so let's go, about, let's go back to irritation for a minute. You know the pearl is formed when it's irritated. It's all good when everything is all beautiful. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, we on Facebook posting everything. God bless me with a new house and God bless me. With... But that's, that's when God is doing something for you. But what about when you're going through the pressing of the olives to get the olive oil? How about when you're going through the grapes being crushed to get the grape juice to get the wine? Can you still praise God then? Can you praise God when, when sickness hits your house? Can you still praise God when your children cuss you out in your face, parents? You know what I'm talking about. Can you still serve God when you lose your job? Can, can you still worship deep? I'm talking about deep worship, deep praying. I know pat a cake stuff. Oh, God is good. God, I love you. No. Talk about in love with God. The Bible said Hannah went to the temple. Year after year, they went to the temple and she was barren. She was barren. But this last time she went and she couldn't even eat, nor could she open her mouth to pray. All she could do was go to the altar and begin to mumble out her prayer where Eli thought she was drunk. Have you ever been at that place where you just, Lord, I need you, Father. I'm going through so bad. And you begin to just let your body pray for you. She began to mumble her prayer where the man of God thought she was drunk. And she said, no, 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 no. I'm just troubled in my soul. And he said, whatever you're praying for, God's getting ready to do it for you this time next year. If you're listening to me and you've been going through that irritation, the Lord says he's giving you pearls. I received it for myself, but I had to share it with somebody. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving you pearls of blessings. He said, open up the shell. Open it up. He said, I'm blessing you for every irritation. And so when a pearl, a pearl is formed because let me tell you how it happens. It's when a foreign object comes upon it. A foreign object. And sometimes you don't understand what's going on. It just feel like so foreign to you. But God said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. He said, listen, the pearl is formed when a foreign object gets into, um, what is it? The, the shell of the, um, what the clam or whatever, whatever it is, whatever animal it is, the clam, the oyster, the mussel. And so it gets in there and, and, and to, to alleviate itself, the, um, the clam, the oyster, you know, when it's feeling irritated, it begins to release a substance called um, knacker, however you pronounce it, and it begins to go around the irritation thing, the thing that's causing the irritation, the irritant, okay? And it begins to go around, it coat it, the thing that's giving it, giving it problem, begin to coat it with this substance called knacker, and that's how the pearl is formed through the irritation. It's and and that's what's been going on with you. It's like God is a God has allowed it to happen, right? Because He said all things are working together for your good. And and whatever the irritation is, just know the blood of Jesus, the anointing, the word of God is going around that thing. It's going around that thing. And and it says right here. It says, it says the only um it says a cult a cultured 
pearl undergoes the same process. The only difference is that the irritant is surgically implanted. So they even have it where they put it in there. The, the, those who, um, they grow the, um, the, the, the clams and such, they put it in there. And it says these seed or nuclei, nuclei are most often formed from muscle shells. So, so even they, 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 can, they can make it happen. You know how you, um, the farmers, they get the clams and such and they, they will put the irritant in there. And sometimes it seems like the Lord's putting stuff on you. But it's not to hurt you. It's to get something out of you. The same way with the um the olives. The same things. The same thing with the grapes. All that crushing. All that pressing. It's to get the anointing. It's just like with the myrrh and frankincense tree. They cut the tree so it can bleed out the 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 the, the resin to get the the coal. You know the beautiful incense and the and the oil. And so all of that stuff. The irritation was for your good. Now you can go ahead and click the heart emoji. I know it didn't feel good. But the book of James tell you, let's go to the book of James. You know, sometimes you read James and you're like, oh my goodness, here come James. Okay. And I promise you, I saw a sign today. It says Fort James. And so I'm like, okay, what, what's up with Fort James? And here come the Lord confirming it. It says in chapter one, verse two, count it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So we always talk about the number three. Number three represents what? Completion and resurrection. You know how we go in. But in order for you to be complete, you got to go through the process. Process. You have to go through your trials. You got to go through the valley of the shadow of death. You got to go through the Red Sea. I know we say the Red Sea, God parted the Red Sea, but you know, it's scary even driving underneath the water in Virginia. I'm like, it could explode in a minute. And we're in the, under, the, underneath the water. Imagine you're walking in between the Red Sea. And you see the, the, the creatures, the sea creatures all backed up. And you're like, oh my, it takes faith to walk through. You're passing over the Jordan and you see the water backed up like a wall. And you're like, let me hurry up and cross just in case, right? And so it takes faith. The Bible says without faith, you can't even please God. And so you think you're being irritated and you want to give up? Now let's look at Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 verse 2, fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. It says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, let's talk about the cross really quickly. I know we go through things in the, in the church and read the Bible and, and, un, until we become religious. But let's not forget about the cross and what happens when you are crucified. Okay, number one. Let me, let me go through it. I had to do my research. I said... I know I've done video, videos on this and teaching on this, but I had to remind myself about Jesus and what he went through. Okay, and so those who are crucified, they're suffocated to death. You're on that cross and, and you die from suffocation. You can't breathe. Okay, the weight of your body pulls down on your diaphragm and it makes it hard for you to breathe. So <laughs> have you ever felt like the thing you're going through, you're like, I can't even breathe. Sometimes you're praying and you're crying. <laughs> right? We've all been there, but we have not been through what Jesus have, has gone through. And so we got to go back and remind ourselves about the cross. Okay? When he was hanging up on that cross, naked, they beat him until his skin came off his body. Right? The cat of nine tails. Imagine being beaten like that. And we over here complaining about our trials. No, 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 no. And God is looking like, I gave you my son. I gave you the king of kings. I gave you my only begotten son to die on the cross for your sins. He became your scapegoat. We, I, put, I put the sins of the world on him. Have you gone through that? Is what you're going through, like, did, did all the sins of the world fall on you? I'm talking about all the sins, murder, perversion, lying, you name all the sins, homosexuality, addiction, all of that was dumped on Messiah, but he endured it. And we over here crying because what? Nothing compared. 
You can't compare it, right? And so the next thing that happens to you when you're crucified, usually they break your legs, except for Jesus. The prophecy was you can't, you're not going to break his leg. Not one of his bones is going to be broken, honey. Touch not. So they didn't break his bone because he, he chose to die. So he gave up his spirit for us, right? But usually they break your bones to, 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 to speed up the crucifixion, to speed up your death. And so they smash your femur bones with a heavy mallet. I'm like crushing you. Okay, so that this way it's even extra harder for you to breathe. Basically forcing you to suffocate really quick and die. Hmm. Have you gone through that? Nobody crushed your, your femur. Nobody has crushed your legs because God is protecting us. And so the enemy comes and he's irritating you with small things. Sm I mean, some of the things. I mean, I wanted to complain until one of the prayer warriors Text me and said, pray for me because, you know, they, they're going to let me know if, if um, this was the last round of chemotherapy for me. And because they're giving me six months to die, to live. Because I said, uh, we're not, we're not, we're not, we, we speak life. But when she texts me, I'm like, Stacey, you better keep it together, girl. You better walk these streets and get what you need and stop complaining. We complaining when somebody else is going through, they will, they will gladly exchange problems with you. And so that's why God said, be grateful, Stacey. Just be grateful. Just be grateful. Don't complain. I know you're disappointed, but I promised you in Isaiah 49 that my people will not be disappointed. And I told you in the book of Joel chapter 2 and Isaiah 61 that my people will not be made ashamed. And so don't complain. Don't worry. Don't be anxious about anything. Crucify your flesh. Crucify that flesh because your flesh will stay in that realm of, of irritation where you become bitter. And you, and, 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 you, and you miss your blessing. And we're in 2020 where God is like, listen, it's a new year. And I already told you I'm doing a new thing. But you're going to miss it being, being distracted. Don't let your pain distract you. Don't let your, your pain irritate you to the point where, you know, you, you don't want to deal with God anymore. Hmm. Because now, now your flesh and you have become God, small G-O-D. And so we have to repent. We have to repent and we're all guilty of this. Let, let the pain hit you at a certain angle. You're like, oh, my God. Right? And, and, and before you know it, you're not even in the spirit anymore. You don't drop parts of your arm, uh, the armor of God. And so it's time for you to be quick to redress yourself. Put on the belt of truth back around your waist. Lift up your shield of faith. Let's go. Th this is end time stuff. You got to be warriors. You can't afford to take off your helmet of salvation. Say ain't going to knock you in your head. Put your helmet of salvation back on. You can't afford to, to put down the breastplate of righteousness. It's going to stab you in your heart. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Keep on the whole armor. Put on the gospel shoes of peace. And don't let the irritation cause you to become naked. Hmm. Who is that for? Lord. My God. And so they, they, they crush your legs and so, you can, so you can suffocate and die. And it says mentally you know you're, you know you're going to die. And so it's unbearable for them. You know, it's intense pain and shame. You can't breathe. It's painful. And, and you go into survival mode and you start, <gasps> and you're trying to hold yourself up. You're trying to survive. Did you go through that? Did you go through that? And you can't hold on anymore. And so you just begin to suffocate and die. Death is knocking at the door for these, for Jesus. Thank God he, he chose to give up the ghosts. And it says when you're crucified, the nerves in your arms, they rub, they rub against the metal from the nails. Can you imagine the pain? Not having any cushion around your nerves. And you're trying to breathe and the pain of, of your nerves rubbing against the nail. That's what suffering is like. Okay? Pain. And the enemy wants to put pain on you. But Jesus already took all of that. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. We got to go back to Isaiah 53. I mean, he got so ugly. We got to read the word. The Bible said that beat him up so badly that he looked ugly. 
look deformed. That's what we're talking about. It says the skin and the muscle are ripped off of you before they even put you on that cross. They want to skin you alive. Okay. They beat you with the nine tail whip that has the metal and the bone clippings at the end. And so whoosh, your skin is ripping off of you. Whoosh. Have you experienced that? If not, when we say praise the Lord, you're supposed to be the first one loud, louder than everybody praising the Lord. We ain't being cute. Talk about we saved and we don't want to praise God. No, 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 no. You're either a sheep or a goat. And if you can't praise God and you can't do this and that, you are a goat. And we need to just be with the sheep. Anyway, we got to go in the sheepfold. Not everybody is of God. I don't care how much tongue you speaking. You can't praise God. You can't worship God until your wig fall off, until your slip is falling down because you're in the flesh. Oh, let me praise God like this. I don't want to praise like that. I don't want you. No, you're supposed to be so sold out. I'm talking about snot coming down your nose because you're not trying to impress nobody. You're trying to impress the king in the name of Jesus. We're going to see who's saved and who's not. And we're not tolerating no foolishness in the body. Them days of being cute is over. I'm trying to tell you. Sometimes you're going through warfare. You don't have time to be cute. Throw on some sweatpants and go to church. No, we're not throwing on no fancy suits to go into the house of the Lord. We're going to go throw on some sweatpants and some raggedy, raggedy sneakers if we have to. And go and praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I know it's tight, but it's right. Prophet. And I've come to deliver the word of God that we got to be tough. The warfare is real. It's real. And you got to make sure you have some real faith in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And so it says they're beating them down, you know, with the whip. And it says they're beating them in the front and the back. Your poor heart. I be hanging out. You know what I mean? They're just beating you in your head. Lashing you in your skull, in your face, your neck, ripping you to pieces like paper. And you're bleeding. You're bleeding out. And then they, they, it says the wooden splint, the splinters scourge the flesh. Now, now you got to carry a wooden cross, ripping at you even more. And then nailing you on it. Okay? That's what Jesus went through. And the Bible said he gladly embraced that cross. I mean, he embraced that thing for you and for me. Now, you think he going to die like that for nothing? He died like that for us to have life and have life more abundantly. So you endure your irritation knowing that there is a reward for those who diligently seek the Lord in the name of Jesus. And so it says that the, the people who are um, being crucified because it's so unnatural, they begin to sweat blood. Mm hmm. Start to sweat blood. And it says it says. The blood loss depletes the body of oxygen and prevents the heart from pumping more blood. And so it can't reach your blood. It can't reach your cells. And so there you go. You're bleeding out. There's no oxygen. I mean, suffocation. You begin to vomit. You're losing consciousness. You're dizzy. You're confused. You're nauseated. I mean, you're sweating. All to suffocate you. Your, your shoulders are dislocated. I'm putting that cross, it says. You're trying to push yourself up to hold up yourself because you're trying to breathe and but your body's hanging down. And you're trying to push yourself up on the cross and, 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 and the, the, the nerves in your, in your wrist is rubbing against the nail. I mean, wherever you turn, you're going to suffer. Right? We didn't go through anything like that. And a lot of the people have heart attacks because of the stress. They begin to hyperventilate and go into cardiac arrest. Okay? They have muscle cramps and spasms. There's pain in their vital organs. That's what Jesus went through, almost, except they didn't break his legs. Amen? And so that's when you pause and you say, thank you, God. I'm grateful. I am grateful. And I know that my irritation, everything that I'm going through, is to strengthen my faith so that my faith will be made of gold and not paper, not leaves, right? It's not going to be burnt up in the fire. We are the three Hebrew boys with Christ in the fire with us. 
And when we come out, we're not going to look like what we've been through. And we're not going to smell like it. And we're not going to talk like what we've gone through. Because there'll be no bitterness in us. Because we're just so grateful. I'm telling you, I went and we do, this, this is ministry. Some people don't think this is ministry, but we've been ministering for years. And I said, we have a need. I'm like, we have a need. I know you guys don't, don't get into the habit of sewing, but I'm like, we as a family, we are in need. No response until Saturday. This one person was like, you will be stuck no more. And she said, here you go. You and your family go. Do what you got to do. And when, when she released that blessing into us, ooh, we began to drive to the store. My God, it's going to bless somebody. I know it blessed me. I'm just like, Father, the enemy tried to help hold you up with that irritation, hold you up, making you get in your feelings, and he's trying to block you from something. What is it that he's trying to prevent you from getting? You got to start analyzing your situation. What is it that, why is all this warfare? Why is all this warfare? Why? Because God getting ready to fight your battle for you. Second Chronicles and give you the plunder. You're going to get the spoil. It's going to take three days to get it. And so the enemy want to block you from that. Go back and read and go back and listen to the video we did on Facebook on Second Chronicles 20. It'll blow your mind. The Lord broke that thing down so good. So ask yourself, what is it that the enemy perceive that's getting ready to happen for you. The Bible said, behold, I do a new thing. It's springing forth. Don't you perceive it? You got to be able to perceive that the enemy is over there perceiving and calculating using witchcraft, right? Familiar spirits trying to predict what's going to happen for you and block you. You got to sit down and say, hmm, nobody robs a bag lady. Why am I up here? Why, why am I walking up military highway with my children trying to carry some water in a cart? Why? What is it that What's going on here? Because this is, this is not of God. So what, what, why the warfare right before the new year? Hmm. Until I got to that store on Saturday, my God. There was a church outside, said Revival Church, big, beautiful church, fancy church, said Revival. And our ministry, the theme is restoration. Now, at our boot camp, we were talking about the resurrection plant. It's also called the Jericho Rose. And I went inside the store, we thinking, God, we free. Like, thank you, God, we can go shop and get some stuff that we need. And I saw this ugly thing on the counter, this ugly thing. Mm. Smell bad, it didn't look bad. And I saw one of the prayer warriors' name. It was, it was her same last name, but the first name was a little different. And I, I, I thought about her, you know, that God bless her. And I said to the man, I said, is that a resurrection plant? And he said, yeah, the Jericho rose. Mm, I just want to pause and say every Jericho wall has fallen for you. Every Jericho wall in the name of Jesus has, has been pulverized. Jericho is that, that thing that's blocking you from making your progress. The Bible said Jericho was shut up. Nothing was coming in or out. But Jericho wall is falling. So you can go on and get the promise that God has for you. The promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey in the name of Jesus. And so I asked him what it was because I couldn't believe my eyes. In December of 2019, we just taught, I just taught about the resurrection plant. I've never seen it. And I was so excited to know about this resurrection plant because Stacy comes from the word Anastasia. That's mean, it means resurrection. So I'm always like resurrection, resurrection powers on the inside, you know, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of us. So when I saw this plant up close and personal, I said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. The man began to pour the water on the, the um, resurrection plant. When you put water on it, it began to slowly open up. The dead thing looked dead and nasty. It begins to come alive. They call it the dinosaur plant. I'm talking about that's some endurance. We will not die but live to declare the works of the living God. That's why you got to have endurance. You can't, you can't afford to be irritated. You have to endure and be persistent because the enemy will come to try to block you and, and, and convince you that the, 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 the Jericho rose, the resurrection plant is dead and will convince you to burn it up. You better pray attention because it looked dead. Valley of dry bones. 
doesn't mean that it's dead. It looks dead. The enemy wants you to look at it, but we have death and life and the power of our tongue. And we have all power and authority to speak those things that be not as though they were. Prophesy to them dead things. Prophesy to the irritation because you know your pearls is coming out of it. And so the man put the water in the, um, on the plant and it began to open up before my eyes. And I said, mm, booyah, that's what the enemy was trying to block me from seeing. He was trying to block me. That was such a prophetic moment. And so we, I said, I'm buying this thing. <laughs> I don't care how ugly it is. And I would smell like dirt. I'm buying this. Brought it home. And we began to pour water on, on our own plant. The thing looked irritated. That's how it is. It looked irritated. Some of us, we just look dried up because of irritation. You need the water of the word. And God promised the new thing, but he also promised to give you water in your wilderness, water in the dry season, right? There's no more loader bar. God said, there's no more loader bar. I've taken you to the promised land. Jericho walls are falling down. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we brought it home and the thing is opening up until it looked like a butterfly. Y'all know I'm like, I love the butterfly. It looked like a butterfly after it finished opened up. And the next day it was still open because it was still a little bit moist because the water, right? The water will bring things alive. The water of the word of God, the water of the Holy Spirit. And then now it has closed, it closed back up. So prophetic. So whenever you don't get that water, Whenever you're too busy, too irritated, too frustrated to read your Bible, you, you're going to dry up. But I'm just, I've just been sent to let you know, keep on drinking that water of the word. Keep on drinking out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. You keep on reading that Bible. Keep on decreeing and declaring the word of God over that dried up situation. Because God promised, he said, listen, he said, my word will not return back unto me void, but it will be accomplished. Isaiah 55. Amen. And so, yeah, that's what I came on here to share with you guys. I, I pray that that just blessed somebody. It blessed me just, just thinking about it because as I was walking on military highway and I don't like walking outside, I'm like, oh my goodness, I gotta walk outside. My OCD is kicking in and I saw a honeycomb. I'm like, it's cold outside on the sidewalk. I took a picture of it. And then like a, the next day or, or whatever I saw on our thermostat. It says honey well. And I'm like, mm, thank you, Father God, a land flown with milk and honey. That's how God's going to bless us. And it is well with our soul. And we are reopening up the wells like Isaac, the, the well that was the Philistine. They put dirt in the well that belonged to Abraham. But as you begin to worship God fast and pray and obeying him and clearing out all that dirt, God said, I'm going to refill those wells, the wells of salvation, the wells of blessing. And then today as I was we were getting the rental and it was a beautiful sapphire color. And I said, mm, we talk about sapphire. All the cars they're giving the people are white. And they said, you, you guys got a blue one. And you know, blue was at the door in the tabernacle, the blue fabric. Right. And Jesus Christ is the door. And, and I'm like, God is making a way. God is just confirming everything. The blue represents the sky, heavenlies, healing. Right. And I'm thinking, OK, hmm, sapphire blessings. And then recently we heard a teaching about the, um, the peacock and how the peacock's color is, is, is like sapphire. And it was talk about how the peacock represents the glory of God and, and, and the throne. And I mean, it's a powerful teaching. And I was like, mm, thank you, Father God, for confirming your word. The glory of the Lord shall, shall be revealed in our situations this year and the years to come, as long as we obey him. Amen. Everybody had a white car. We got a blue one in the name of Jesus. And as we were getting the car, the big sign is outside. It said Maxwell. And I'm like, what's Maxwell? You know, I'm praying attention. And I'm like, what's Maxwell? Because, you know, he showed me Honeywell. Now, what's Maxwell? And Maxwell, you know, obviously I'm thinking about maximum blessing and, and, and the well of blessings, you know. You begin to, like, look at it. But the name Maxwell means um, stream. It means stream. And God said, I'm providing streams, you know, of water, great stream in your, in your wilderness, 
just think about the multiple streams of income for those of you who need financial blessings. Yeah, it comes from this water, you know, streams of blessings. And, and God is going to do give us the maximum. I'm talking about, you know, exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever ask or think. The name Maxwell is also tied to spring. And this goes back to the word of God. So let me go to Isaiah 43 in the name of Jesus, because I'm going to encourage myself. This is what I do. Sit there and look at the word of God and try to just make sure I pray attention. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Father God. Thank you, God. Thank you. If this is blessing, you can click on the heart. Go ahead. You, you know, if it's blessing you, I'm not sent to everybody, but if it's blessing you, go ahead and click on the heart and make sure you give God some praise using your emoji, using your words. Amen. And so, and I also saw a church, it says rise and it says about forgetting the past, forget, forgetting the former things all around the same area that had Moses a street called Moses, a street, a street called Diamond. This is all around me where Maxwell, Maxwell was. And I'm just praying attention. I'm like getting like overflow. And I'm like, <gasps> okay, this, that's me. And so Isaiah 43, 18 says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Don't be irritated by the stuff that happened last year. Because God said, behold, I'm doing a new thing. It says, now it shall spring forth. And so when you see the word spring, you think about spring water, but also talk about the weather, right? The weather, spring, right? Springtime, but also springing, like leaping into your blessings. I love how the play on word, it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? You got to perceive this thing, right? It says you got to perceive it. I'm making a way in the wilderness. And he said, I'm giving you rivers in the desert. And another translation said, I'm giving you streams of water there in your wilderness where you have been irritated. I'm giving you your Samuel. You know who Samuel is? Samuel was a great prophet in the Old Testament. And his mama was, it was irritated by, by Penina, Penina, because Hannah was barren. And so for every barren situation, get ready to give birth to your Samuel. Get ready to give birth in the name of Jesus. God said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Amen. And, and, and he's going to give you growth. Things are going to start to grow for you because you didn't give up. You didn't curse God. You kept on praising God. Right. He said, I'm going to give, give drink to my people. Isaiah 43 verse 20. He said, I'm going to give you streams in the wasteland. I'm going to give you drink. The same thing with the resurrection plant. The moment we gave it some water, honey, it, came, it, it started to open up. <laughs> when you, as you begin to read the word of the word of God and begin to pray the word of God, your eyes are going to open up even more. Your spirit, your soul, and those you're praying for, your whole household, is going to open up and come alive. Ask me how I know. This morning I checked my Amazon, and I did a prophetic declaration book for children. We fasted for the children the month of November 2019. And believe it or not, somebody came on my review and I think she gave me a one star and she began to speak against the word of God. She thought she was attacking me. She thought, and I'm like, you don't know who you're talking to. When I open my mouth and pray, the Lord respond to me. And I'm thinking, the moment you bought that book, God, God, God has already purposed himself to bless your children. She began to say that basically she wasted her money um, getting this for her grandchildren or blah, 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 whatever she said. But she linked it to her grandchildren. And then she began to say, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm, I'm thinking, wow, the word of God didn't bless you. Speaking the word of God over your children did not bless you. And I'm, and I'm reminded, oh, we have the sheep and we have the goats. And so the Lord wanted me to see that the enemy is attacking your prayers for a reason, because I know. I know the anointing is on these prayers. I know it when you open your mouth and begin to pray the word of God that God's going to move. And that's how you're supposed to pray. You're supposed to pray the word of God, not your own will, not your own desire. You're supposed to pray the word of God because that's like water being poured on the resurrection plant so we can open. Speak, Lord. I am listening today in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. And there's another verse that I'm, I, I'm hearing. I'm going to share with you and we're going to pray and, and we're done. That's it. I came on here to encourage you first, encouraging myself. 
first encouraging myself in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. And so there's another verse I'm hearing. There you go. Isaiah 41, verse 18. God says, I will, I will make rivers flow on barren heights and springs within the valleys. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the parched grounds into spring. And the King James says, I will open rivers in the high places and fountains in the midst of the valley. You see how God is opening up things for us? Hmm. Yeah. He spoke to us in our Bible, um, in our marriage boot camp about the opening up, the great awakening. That's what the word amen is. And when you talk, we see amen all throughout the Bible. It's very prophetic. Okay. And so I will open rivers in the high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. And I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. And then when you, when you go to the next section, Let's go over it. And that's, this, this is all linked to Maxwell. This is all linked to the word of God. It's linked to um, the resurrection plant testimony. In verse 19 of Isaiah 41, it says, I will put in the desert the cedar. My appointment today was on Cedar Road. And the Bible promises that the righteous will flourish like a palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. That's Psalm 92. And so the word of God says, I will put in the desert the cedar. And the acacia, the myrtle, and the olive. And I will set the junipers in the wasteland and the fir and the cypress together. Please understand that the olive tree takes forever to grow. It like it takes forever to get a harvest. I want to say it takes 14, 14 years. I have to look at my notes. But you want to look at the olives. You, you need patience. You can't afford to be irritated. It takes time to grow things. You want your stuff lash. 20 years ago, God's like, I got to develop you for the blessing. I got to prepare the vessel. I can't put old things. What is I can't put new blessings into old things, right? You can't pour the new wine into the old wine skin because the, the old wine skin is going to crack up and, the, and, and it's going to be a waste. Be careful this year not to waste your oil or anything. Be very careful. The enemy wants you to waste your time, waste your energy on people you're not sent to, things you're not sent to do. And it takes time for you to get that refill. Hmm. So be very careful this year how you just dish everything out. Be very careful because everything takes time. Amen. And yes, God is accelerating us. Those of us, the enemy has been blocking you and you've been wasting time. God is giving you acceleration. But wisdom going forward. Don't waste your oil on everybody. You're not sent to everybody. Don't waste your, your, the wine. Don't waste all of that. Don't waste your water. Be very careful, okay? Because it takes time for God to, to, to prepare you and equip you. And here you are, God, been pre preparing you for 10 years for something. And the enemy will come and distract you. The, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you will have life, right? And that you will have it more abundantly. So be very careful. And I'm talking to myself. I know we like to help everybody and do, do everything, but be very careful because you are not sent to everybody and everybody is not sent to you. And before you know it, now you got to go through seasons of trying to go through restoration because you were disobedient, because you were deceived by the enemy. And so just be wise. Pray, for, pray about everything. Watch everything. Pray attention. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Were you blessed, victorious ones? I'm just looking at my screen right now because I'm just like looking at my notes as I'm talking to you guys. I, I, I don't even know who's on here. I see Miss um, Carol Peoples. Carol, I passed Peoples Baptist Church today in Chesapeake. I was like, Miss Carol, I put, it in, I put it in the group so you can see it. So God bless you. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It says People's Baptist Church. Hmm. And so you, you are sent to a people. You are sent to a people, just like John the Baptist. Just like John the Baptist. Everybody couldn't go to John the Baptist. What? He in the wilderness, eating locusts and wild honey, wearing hairy stuff. <laughs> everybody not sent to. Everybody, listen, everybody not going to John the Baptist. He, he was slicing them up with his tongue. You broad and vipers. <laughs> So know who you're sent to, okay? So Carol, you know who you're sent to, honey. Everybody can't handle, you know, that, 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 yeah, they can't handle everybody. They can't handle you. 
<laughs> Baptist mean to dip. And so Miss Carol, just dip. Go ahead and take your dip in that blessing. Enjoy it. Dip in that well of blessings in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Dip, 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 dip. When you go down and come back up, hmm, it's like Naaman. When he went down, when he went down and came back up, his skin was new. Hmm. God is restoring our youths like the eagle. Let's dip, dip in that word. Dip in the water of that word. When, when that plant was dipped in that water, it began to open up. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Just keep on dipping in that water. In the name of Jesus, people going to bless you from all over, Miss Carol Peoples. You need to go on ahead and read Isaiah 60. I love Isaiah 60. Amen. And I love how your name is people because God say, I'm saving people from all tongues, tribes. <laughs> And that's where the frankincense and myrrh comes in, where Jesus received that because the, the smoke from the incense go up like a, a sweet fragrance, you know, like the prayers of the saints. Hmm. And so your prayers have gone up, honey, like a sweet fragrance before God. Glory to God. And so you need to go on, go on and read Isaiah chapter 60, 30 and 30. 30 is the, the um, number when you start doing ministry. So that's times two. Honey, you better know it. Mm-hmm. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening in the name of Jesus. And so it says that, Miss Carol, anybody who has the faith to receive it, you receive it in the name of Jesus. My God, it says everybody coming to bless you. Everybody coming to bless you. Let me get the King James Version. King James Version. And not only that, I, when, I, when I was going to the school, I saw people's um, laundromat, the cleaners every day, honey, people's cleaners. So you already know, hmm, cleansed by the word of God, pure, blessed, blessed and most highly favored of the most high God in the name of Jesus. And, and right around the area where, the, where people's, the cleaners place was, I think I shared this in the group already with you like last year. It's next to Lion Street. You are bold as a lion, honey. You better roar. In the name of Jesus. It says nations will come to your light. Kings to the brightness of your dawn. Mm -hmm. When you don't give up, that's how God bless you. That's how God is blessing you. It says lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. It says your sons come from afar. Your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. And your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. I saw, I saw today crossroad and cross something. And I'm thinking, yeah, a ship. It says sh it, it was a sh yeah, ship crossing. Your fleet is coming. Your fleet is coming. It says right here, then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. And I keep on seeing the word Mary. I saw Mary Bank and Mary. Let me see. This morning, my husband couldn't find something. It was like Mary, Mary something. I'm like, okay, let's look for Mary something. The joy, you find your joy, honey. Your joy has been restored. And then I, I, we got home and we saw Mer Merrick, this Mary, everything with Mary, Mary, Mary. Okay, and so it says, um, your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. Hmm. It says, to you, the riches of the nations will come. And that's verse five. And then you can read the whole chapter and just, just be blessed. It says, arise and shine, verse 1, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you, Miss Carol people. I think your name means joy or something like that, right? Doesn't, doesn't joy mean, doesn't Carol means that? So I don't know. I'm just speaking what I'm, what, I'm trying to put the puzzle back to, together. <laughs> like, yeah, there you go. Carol means joy. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Mary, 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 Mary. Anything else? Who else is on here? Yes, Mary means joyous. Joyous in the name of Jesus. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I receive this for me too. I'll take some joy. <laughs> With the pearls of blessing. Look at pearls of joy. Pearls of joy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And let, let me see what the comments are. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I can't even, okay, let me see if I can go up a little bit. Yes, Kimberly said, break open the alabaster box. Yes, and you know, the alabaster, the, the oil was expensive. 
took a whole year's worth, uh, you know, of wages. And so we who love God, we give everything. You can tell, you can tell those who are truly of God, you have a servant's heart. You have a heart to give. Okay. We give even when we don't have it to give and we cry when we can't give. Is that you? God going to bless you exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever ask or think. And we started out with James, counting all joy. So God is taking us back to joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And so when you're going through your irritation, that's when you begin to call upon the joy of the Lord, which is inside of you. Because one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit is joy. Love, joy, right? The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, all the good stuff, self-control. Keisha says, God, I thank you for the irritation. You better know it. Get your pearls and wear your pearls. Yes, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And usually the brides, the brides, right? They put on pearls with your, let me tell you, the, the bride, the, the, the wedding gowns, and we are the bride of Christ. We can't, God said, I'm coming back for a church without spot or wrinkles. Ain't no way you, you have, you're going to marry and you have on some dirty old white dress. Uh-uh. It's white, beautiful. Mm, speak, Lord. The lily, the word lily means pure. It means rebirth. It means passion, right? And so you come alive. It's like a rebirth. And you have on your white garment with the pearls. That is some glory of God and some favor right there. In the name of Jesus. Carol said, preach, Stacy. Listen, the enemy going to regret messing with me. <laughs> When he messes with me, God give me downloads. He give me some downloads. And I, I'm talking about, that's why I'm like, okay, if I'm going through it, I know God's trying to download something. Oh, my goodness. And you got you to gotta bear it and endure it. Carol said, always find something to be thankful. Yeah, always find something to be thankful for. Could be so much worse. I thank you, Jesus, for the, for the welfare of life as it is right now. Yes, no matter what. Just thank him. It could be worse. Destiny said, glory be to God. Mm-hmm. Amen. Kara said, my God, my burden just became a little lighter from hearing this word. Amen. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> and, I, and I knew when I was walking up the street and, and then I saw we, we, we buy broken gold. All this came from when I was going through that stuff. And I'm like, mm-hmm. God is giving me the download. And I'm just paying attention to everything. Walking down military highway. It's warfare. But God is fighting for us. And we got to know how to fight. The weapons, of our warfare, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God for the pulling down the strongholds. And some of us, we've been going through. We're going through. And then you ask somebody to give you some water and they just ignore you. You're like, oh, help me. <laughs> but, but most people nowadays, the Bible says only a few people, what is it, a remnant is going to be saved. Right. A remnant. Because a lot of people, their heart is wicked. They have hard hearts. And so... They don't bless other people and, and that, they don't understand when you bless others, that's tied into your blessing. And even when you say it, they still don't, they don't, they don't move. And that's because they're goats. We don't mess with goats. We, we eat curry goat. I can't even eat curry goat this year. Whew, this is a new year. Carol said, hallelujah. Destiny said, hallelujah. Shauna, Shania says, amen. Glory to God. Yes, 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 yes. We're going to praise him. You better praise him. You want your breakthrough. Kimberly said, I saw the numbers 50 and 60 today. 50 is Jubilee. That's joy again because God is restoring everything. Okay. Times seven. We're in the courts of heaven. Justice. Amen. And so 50 is Jubilee. It's also Pentecost and it's Passover. We don't pass over. The Bible said, <laughs> the Bible said when, the, when, when, when after Passover, God's people, Pharaoh was like, get out. While they're burying the dead, the firstborn, mm -hmm, don't mess with God's people. They were burying the dead and God's people were rejoicing and leaving to go to the promised land. Okay. So Jubilee, Passover and Pentecost, outpouring of the Holy Ghost, falling down like cloves of tongue, being baptized with Holy Ghost fire in the book of Acts. Amen. And 60. That reminds me of um, Isaiah 60. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it, it reminds me also of um, 30. 30 plus 30. And 30 is the, the age where the priests begin to do their service. That's when David became king. That's when John the Baptist started um, prophesying. And Jesus did ministry around that time. And also Ezekiel. And you can go back and you, look, you can look it up. And then you have the three, right? And you have 10. You can do that too. Three is completion and um, resurrection. And number 10 is obedience, um, law, testimony, responsibility, 
Amen. Ten, com Ten Commandments. Once you follow the word of God, right? Drink the word of God. That's how you're going to get your blessings in the name of Jesus. Um, Kimberly said, me too. I've, I've seen cross all day long. Amen. 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 And Carol said, look at Douglas right now. Girl. <laughs> you already know. And then Douglas riding around in his little blue car. Mm, you pray for God to just bless him. In the next, sapphire blessings. Sapphire is beautiful color. Amen. Carol said, joyous song. Yes, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is singing over us. Just singing beautiful songs over us. Zephaniah. Zephaniah. And this goes back to 2 Chronicles 20, right? They were singing and praising God. They weren't stressing out. They, they started to be stressed out, right? And then they went to fast and pray. And that's when, what's his name? Um, Jehaziel popped up. And his name means Yah looks, God sees. And he was like, do not be afraid of this vast army. Remember in verse 17? And he was like, stand still. The battle don't belong to you. God is fighting your battles. Yeah. Very powerful. Very powerful. The whole chapter. And where they were passing over, it's called Tekoa, means trumpet. You know, we got, we got to blow the trumpet in Zion. And, and the, the, the person, Jehaziel, who was prophesying, he came from the bloodline of Asaph. Asaph means to gather. And they were the ones that were in charge of the, um, the music and stuff. So God is big on music. Even, though, even the spirit is, sing, is singing over us. Amen. What else? Let me look at the comments. Um, Kimberly said, that's what I heard when I saw the cross over and over, that we are crossing over. Yes, and I saw a crossing twice. Ship crossing and crossroads and yeah, glory to God. All right, so I soak this message, yes, with the blood of Jesus. If you were blessed, you can sow. Um, Carol says, was looking at the name Douglas. Yes, Douglas means um, dark water, and dark water is where you find gold. Yeah, somebody told us that like two years ago. We were like, oh my goodness. Usually when you see dark waters, um, there's gold. Mm, speak, Lord, speak, Lord, speak, Lord, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. The Lord said, I'm giving you hidden treasures. What's that verse? What's that verse? Yes, Lord. We want the gold. Isaiah 45, verse 3. It says, I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. And I saw your name, peoples. I mean, it don't get no clearer than that. <laughs> and then res the resurrection plant is linked to Anastasia, which and Stacy comes from that. It means resurrection and bountiful. It means bountiful um, and fruitful. So you better look at your name. I think Kimberly, what's your name? Like royalty or something like that. Look at your name. Maybe right in your face. God is giving you hidden treasures. So that means you gotta go digging for it. Like the resurrection plant. Nobody want this plant. It is ugly. When it, when it doesn't have the water and usually the things that are hidden, that's where the blessings are. If it's remember, 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 wide is the road that leads to destruction and many find it, but narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few will find it. You understand? So you got to go digging for it. That's why anybody marrying somebody who have everything hanging out, everybody can see all your parts. No, you want somebody who's covered up. The treasure is covered up. Okay, that was that was an extra for those of you who want to get married. Cover up, right? Yes. And so Kimberly said, my brother's name is Zion. And I kept hearing it this morning. Yes, Zion means like fortification. And we are Zion, God's people. And, and those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. They're never shaken. Amen. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Zion, Zion, Zion. Zion, Zion, Zion. Yes. I must, I must make sure I confirm confirm what I just said. I did the, I did the research a while back. Yeah, but Zion I believe means like fortification. Um, it's it's linked to that. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm giving you the right the right thing. And it's all it also represents God's people. Zion represents God's people. But let me confirm what I just said. Um, and it also means a signpost. A signpost, and God will use us. Yes, I mean fortress, and um, a signpost. God will God will use you as a signpost in these last days. Amen. 
Miracle signs and wonders will follow you all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. Um, Zion in the Hebrew also means dry place. And God already told us he's given us water in our dry places. Hmm. Thank you, Father God. In Arabic, uh, it means defend. God is defending us. Second Chronicles 20. God, God said, I'll fight your battles for you. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. Thank you, Father God. Girl, that's your name, Kimberly? That's what, that's what Kimberly means? Let me, girl, you already know. My goodness. Yes, Kimberly means royal fortress. Oh, my good girl. You better get your um royal blessings. You are a royal priest of the holy nation. All of God's children, right? We call this royalty. And I love, like I always tell everybody, I love the um the queen bee. Because the queen bee only eats royal jelly, honey. And so you, you go on and get your royal, royal jelly. <laughs> All of us. Who's ready for your royal jelly? You, you need to put the honey emoji right there in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Who else is on here? I see four. Four is Carol, your number, number four. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. You are blessed from the north, south, east, and west. Doors are opening up in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, I saw Anthony on here. Um, Anthony means high, highly praiseworthy. Didn't we didn't we say for um for us to be to praise the Lord, and it also means flower. And God's been speaking about flower. <laughs> it's springing forth. Don't you perceive it? It's time for growth. We're blooming and blossoming in the word of God, the same way the resurrection plant um, came back. See, everybody who's on here is supposed to be on here. Anthony also means, let me see. Let me look at the Hebrew. Let's look at the Hebrew. Yep. It says in the Greek, it's flower. And in the Hebrew, it says, I believe it's Hebrew. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. And Destiny, you already know. <laughs> we know what our destination is. <laughs> for my plan is to prosper you, saith the Lord, not to harm you. For I know the plans concerning you, saith the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. Right? Jeremiah 29, 11 is your birthright. In the name of Jesus. Yes, so Anthony has different meanings. But I thank God. I thank God. I take that flower every day, all day, and I will give God the highest praise. And we are blessed and most highly favored of the Lord. Amen. Anthony reminds me of Tony. And Tony means victorious. Come on, victorious ones. In the name of Jesus. And it means priceless. Our faith is priceless. But hold on to your faith. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Highly praiseworthy, priceless. That's what that's what the name means, priceless. Wow. Thank you, Father God. Priceless. So precious that its value cannot be determined. That's who we are to God. And that's who God is. Right? So precious. That its value cannot be determined. And that's who we are. So let nobody mishandle you going forward. It means having a value beyond any price. Invaluable. Costly. That's what the anointing oil. She gave the best. Poured it all out on Jesus. Which was to prepare him for the burial. Which is also symbolic of what. It also connects with what he got as a gift. As a baby. They gave him the frankincense and the myrrh. And all of that is used in the um, burial and such, right? The oil. And and the gold is symbolic of his deity. So they gave him the right gifts and they gave him three. Three is symbolic. On the third day, he rose again. And so priceless also means costly because of rarity. Gold is rare. Diamond is rare. Sapphire is rare. So you value it. It's because it's rare, precious. Um, yeah. And that's it. <laughs> precious priceless blessings come now locate us now Kimberly said I just passed a sign that says to grow 
embrace challenges. Yes, it's stretched. It's gonna stretch you. It's, you know, we want things to be easy. It's not. It's not gonna be easy. I'm sorry. I thought. I thought surely, if I pray all day every day, <laughs> I'll escape some things. The weapons will form and irritate you, but they will not prosper. They will not prosper. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes. And so be blessed, victorious ones. I just wanted to come on here and um, encourage somebody. Don't be. Don't let any irritate you. Irritate the, irritate him with your praise. Like this right here, I purposely came on here because I, I, I knew it was going to irritate <laughs> the kingdom of darkness. Right? You mess with me and I'm going to come back and I'm going to keep on serving God even harder. And our car rental came from Hertz, H-E-R-T-Z. And one website says it means to be strong. It means to be brave. And, and it says heart. But when I saw it, I thought about hurt. Like, you know, the enemy comes to hurt you. Right? But God is like, no, be strong and courageous. And then he says, um, the righteous are bold as a lion. And one of my posts on my website, I put, we're entering 2020 like the lions. Right? We're, we're not giving up. No matter, the, no matter the warfare, you got to be brave. You got to be strong. You got to be tough because stuff is going to come at you and you can't have spaghetti spine. You can't, your faith can't be made of paper. It cannot. You have to have golden faith. Your faith should be gold. It should be diamond. Diamond is the strongest substance in the earth, right? It's, you need diamond. I passed diamond today, diamond street. And so we got to go hard and worship harder and fasting and praying, because different things are happening around the world. I mean, didn't it just bomb Iran or something? We got to cover our nations with the blood of Jesus. Stuff is happening. Signs of the time. He's, Christ said in Matthew 24, I believe it, it's just signs. It's not the end. It's, it's telling you the end is near. And so we can't be playing around. You know, we need to be building our businesses and getting freedom so that when it's time to do what we got to do, we got to do it. Without asking anybody for permission. If we call ourselves royalty, we better listen, ask God for ro to, to have the evidence of royalty, right? We want the priceless ble um, blessings. We want the financial prosperity. We want the, he the health, the um, healing in our bodies. It's very difficult to do ministry if you're sick, right? So we got to go in there in the Bible and, and, and dig up for those treasures. Get your healing, right? Get the blessings for your marriage and for your children, Amen. And, 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 and be a sign of, of, of Christ in the earth. Enough with the church looking all sick and, and broken down. You know, we are the body of Christ. He died so that we can have life and have life more abundantly. So go dig, use the, use the shovel of the word and begin to dig up the, the treasures that God has for you. Digging up and praying and fasting and in the word. Okay, God wants, God, wants to, God wants to give you more. He said, I'm giving you double for your trouble. The thief has been caught. And he said, I'm giving you seven times. Go get your seven times. <laughs> Blessing. Amen. He said, I want to increase you a thousand times. And that's in Isaiah 60 and in Deuteronomy 1 11. So God want to increase you a thousand times. You better go get it. And the enemy going to try to block you. You better know how to fight back the right way. And that's why we're doing our... Our Bible study, prophetic Bible study on Wednesdays and our mar marriage boot camp on Saturdays to help train up the body of Christ. Because some people don't know how to fight or you just need reinforcement. You're going, you're going through. Like we were looking for reinforcement. One person showed up. One person, you know, the Lord released her. And I'm sure everybody else was held up because the enemy was trying to block your, block your destiny helpers. You have divine destiny helpers who have been assigned to help you. And so you got to cover the people, your, your helpers, cover them with the blood of Jesus. Because then they get tied up. Like, like in, the, in the book of Daniel 10, the angel, Daniel's angel got held up, locked up, detained. Okay? He had to call for Michael to come and help. So pray for your destiny helpers, your divine destiny helpers, because sometimes they want to come to bless you, but they get blocked. And so we, that's why we got to stay fasted up and prayerful. Amen. Yeah, so I'm about to go over here and, yeah, just spend some more time with the Lord. And I will talk to you guys later. I cover this message with the blood of Jesus. I seal our progress. 
um, our, our families, our possessions with the blood of Jesus. There will be no backlash or retaliation. Father, I thank you for releasing your angels to fulfill this word. Father, I thank you. I pray that, Father, we were pleasing to you. Father, I pray that you just continue to get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise out of our lives. Father, I thank you for more download that's coming to us, coming to our spirits, coming to our souls so we can get closer to you. Father, we ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as we go forth, oh God. Help us to have discernment of spirits to know who we are sent to, who whom we're not sent to, what we should be doing, what we should not be doing. I pray for favor, oh God, to be released, oh God, so that more, more doors will be open for us, more blessed doors. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak overflow and prosperity over us. Father, I thank you for the big, humongous blessings. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, it says rise. And we saw rise church. Father, yesterday I posted that said rise. Father, I thank you that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. Father, they, they shall soar on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Father, in the name of Jesus, I th thank you and I praise you in advance, oh God, for the more blessings that you're giving to us. Thank you for saving our whole households. Thank you for spiritual blessings, marital blessings, parental blessings, financial blessings, physical blessings in our bodies, healing. In the name of Jesus, amen. Be blessed, victorious ones, and I'll talk to you later. Please share this broadcast.